2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Now the sister's question is, she understands that King Solomon was an Israelite, she understands that we're the Israelites, but her confusion is, well if King Solomon was an Israelite, why did he marry other nations, if that's a sin according to the Bible? It is a sin according to the Bible. Interracial marriage is against God's laws. Right. So now let's read this, the scripture. The book of 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 1. Ah. But King Solomon loved many strange women. So that was King Solomon's problem. King Solomon loved many strange women. God calls any women outside of the Israelite women strange. That's right. Why? Because they, they go against God's laws. They think that it's strange for them to wear a dress. They think that it's strange for them to not eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Those things are okay to them. They celebrate uh, Christmas and they worship other gods outside of the one true God of Israel. You understand? So that's why God calls them strange. Read on together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them. Mm. So that was God's law. You shall not go into the Moabites, which today are the Chinese. You shall not go into the Ammonites, which today are the Japanese. The Edomites, which today are the white people. God said, don't go in unto them. Don't intermingle yourself with them because they will take you away from my law. You understand? Read on. Neither shall they come in unto you, uh -huh. for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Mm. So you see what it was? They will turn away your heart, meaning your mind, to their gods. So Solomon, because of his lust for many different women, he clave to them. And that was his downfall. What was his punishment? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Mm. First Kings chapter 11, verse 11. Right. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend any howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So that was his punishment. God said that he would take the kingdom away from Solomon, but not in his time. It was when he passed away and his son rose up in power. God split the kingdom. You understand? Rehoboam. That was Rehoboam. That was Rehoboam was King Solomon's son, and Rehoboam was wicked. So the Most High brought the punishment upon Rehoboam, and he gave three tribes, which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, to uh, the to the southern kingdom. And then the other tribes, Ephraim on down, was considered the northern kingdom. They were, when you read through the scriptures, they were the the, the nation of Israel, the kingdom of Israel, and then you had the southern kingdom of Judah. So that's the discrepancy. I mean, uh, the, the difference. You understand? Thank you. Of course. Let's ask you a question. Okay. Oh, hold on, really quick. Oh. Let's listen to this. Piece. Sorry. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountain of Israel, 
and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So that was, this is talking about when Christ comes, because God says he, he's going to take, you see the sign right here? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was the southern kingdom. Ephraim on down was the northern kingdom. So they were considered two different nations. That's why you have Judah at, Jews as the southern kingdom and the nation of Israel or the Gentiles in the New Testament. So God says, no, they're not going to be separate anymore. I'm going to bring them together. I'm going to grab them together into one stick. And the king that's going to be king over them is Christ. You understand? So this is going to happen during these times. Christ is going to put the understanding out there and we're going to come back together as the nation of Israel as one. You understand? These people right here aren't teaching that. You see how you're asking us these questions? We're going into the scriptures, answering your questions according to the Bible. They're misleading the people. You understand? So now it says, where are you from? What's your nationality? That's what they say, yeah. Okay, so according to the Bible, you're from the tribe of Judah. That's so now how long have you been watching us? Or how long have you been studying the Bible? For a very long time. And I have another thing too. I gotta show you something real quick. So you've been watching us for a very long time. <laughs> so you know, sister, that there's changes that you have to make. I know. All right. What, you have another question? Yeah, I do. Okay, what's your question? Okay. You know the tribe of Judah, right? They say you're not supposed to have hate in your heart for your brother, right? Uh-huh. But I, I find myself being alienated because, you know, in America, you have hatred from Levi, Benjamin, uh, uh, uh <laughs> from and it's like it's, it's kind of hard because when you in your heart when you know the truth and you're supposed to love uh -huh. but then when you out in the world in your daily life <laughs> you don't get you don't get it and there's some people that is more lost than others and then i don't think they ever gonna get it okay That's so now is. your question slash statement is why is it that me being me knowing that i'm from the tribe of judah and knowing that these are all my people why is there so much hatred if the Bible says you're not supposed to hate? Yeah, right? Towards towards Judah specifically. You know that this that's the world. So it's like we got double. So okay, let me make it plain to the people. She's the sister is saying, why is it that towards the American black, the other the other people of ours, such as the Jamaicans, the Haitians, the uh, West Indians? The, the Hispanics, why did they hate the American blacks so much if we're supposed to be the same? Yes. Let's read the scripture. Mm. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 7. Uh -huh. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So God said that he would save the tents of Judah first, meaning what? That he would give the understanding to Judah first, the American blacks, to go out and teach the rest of the people. Teach the Jamaicans, teach the West Indians, teach the Haitians, teach the Hispanics, teach the Native Americans. God gave the understanding to Judah first, read. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So now he gave the understanding to Judah first so that the other tribes don't magnify themselves against Judah. You understand, read on. That was it. That was it. So that's, so there is a hate. Yeah, Alright, read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So you see what the Bible says? The Bible says, Blessed are we. Because when men speak against us, they're not speaking against us per se, they're speaking against the Bible. They see us applying the commandments, they see us walking differently, they see us walking with confidence because we know who we are. So they're going to say, well, to hell with them, they're, they're wicked, things like that. But the Bible says we're blessed when men speak this way for us, about us, because we're following Christ. You understand? So don't let it ruffle your feathers, it's all good. The Bible had it prophesied, you understand? And I said that that was a lot. Yes, Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. 
You hear what the Bible says? The Bible says, Judah, you American blacks, you are the tribe that your brother shall praise. Why? Because Christ came out of the line of Judah. Christ had a nationality. Christ had a people that he belonged to. There's no immaculate conception in the Bible. Right. The Christian church is not teaching that. Christ had a nation of people that he belonged to, that he came from. Christ was a Jew. He was a black man, right. according to the Bible. Right. And the Bible says that Judah, you American blacks today, you are the tribe that the other tribes are going to uh, bow down to and envy because Christ came out of you. They're going to uh, they're going to follow you because Christ came out of your line. You understand? You, you guys are going to get the understanding first, and we taught. Why a lot of people who may want to come to the truth probably won't come because that right there, the thought of them bowing down to American blacks, that's that's, that's a stumbling block for some <laughs> of our people, yes. Ooh. But the spirit is going to go out and certain spirits are going to be moved, they're going to come in. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. But all we're going to do is continue to, to teach the word. Okay. So now, sister, you have another question? Just the last one. I swear. Ask, ahead, ask the questions, the other people are going to be edified. Okay, I don't know. Um, what group y'all? I thought at all Israelites was one group, but I see that there's different sectors of the group. Now you have some that they discredit the tribe. They're trying to say that the Hispanic and the Puerto Ricans is not a part of the 12 tribes. And this is another sector, so I don't see. All right, so. And y'all both some, preaching the, the truth, so I, I don't know where they get it. Okay. Well, we are Israel united in Christ. We teach repentance, we teach the faith in Christ, and to keep the commandments of God. That's what sets us apart from the other nations. We teach our women not to wear dresses. We teach our women that they must be humble, things like that. We teach the commandments. So now, for the other uh, camps that may have misunderstanding and things like that, or hatred in their hearts, whatever the case may be, they're going to say that the, the 12 tribe sign is off. Why? Because they, they, what, what's the history? They bring it out. They say that, well, uh, the, uh, the Native Americans had blacks in slavery. They say that the Hispanics had blacks in slavery and things like that. They look Chinese. They look Chinese. They say that we, that we look different. They say that the only way that you could be an Israelite is if you're dark skin. You understand? So there's many different uh, mix-ups there. Let me get Jeremiah 12 and 10. My heritage is actually the second than. The Native that, American. Sister, that is focus. That is focus. If you're going to get understanding from the Bible, the Bible says, a good understanding have all they that do the commandments. So now when you read the commandments and you see the people that are read, holding the Bible trying to teach you, such as the Christian church, if they're not applying the commandments, that means that they don't have understanding according to the Bible. So watch. You shall know them by their fruits. You understand? You should know them by their actions, by their doings. So now let's read what you got. Jeremiah 12 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 10. The 12 and 9 or 12 and 9? Jeremiah 12 and 9. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 9. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. So now the Bible is saying, my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The Bible also says that Ephraim, talking about the northern kingdom, the northern tribes, is like a cake unturned. So you cook, right? You cook a pancake. You don't flip it over. One side is light, the other side is dark. Just like our hand. It's light, it's dark. So we have different shades. That's all that that means. You understand? We have different shades throughout our people. So for you to say that, oh, well, they're not, they're not the Israelites because of their skin color, let me get Deuteronomy um, 28, verse 16. Hold on. 15. This is a speckled bird. Okay. Some, sometimes we say it's not good. I know it's still a speckled bird. bird. Yeah. Has two or four of the colors on the bird. Green, red, orange, red, brown. Uh, yeah, 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 so now we're going to read the curses that helps us identify whether or not we're the Israelites. You understand? The scripture says um, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. The spirit is the word. When you when you read the word, it, it correlates, it resonates in your spirit, it resonates in your soul. 
and you understand that you are an Israelite. Why? Because the things prophesied are now your history. You understand? Deuteronomy 28. This is how you prove that these people are the Israelites. Let's read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 16, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, <coughs> which I commanded thee this day, that all his curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible says that the blacks and Hispanics are cursed people. And because of these curses, this is how we know today that we're the Israelites. Give me verse 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. So these curses shall be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. When you use, for, with a sign, you use the sign to identify something. Jamaica Center Station. You know that this is Jamaica Center Station. So now when you read these curses about our sons and daughters being given to another people and us not having power to get them back, about us going into slavery on slave ships, about us having yokes of iron on our necks, this is how you know, regardless of our skin tone, our skin complexion, that we are the Israelites. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible. We are God's chosen people. That's right. You understand? So now, Changing gears real quick, focusing on you, sister. Real quick, just real quick. On Netflix, there's a show called The Get Down. You know what I'm talking about? There's a show basically about the Bronx in the 1970s where black people and Puerto Ricans were going through the same thing of the, the buildings being burned down by the insurance landowners. Ephraim and Judah was oppressed together. They both were oppressed. Because if you look at Puerto Ricans, some of them look black. A lot of, actually, a lot of them look black, darker than me. Dominicans. Mexicans, they've got a darker color, especially especially those um, that haven't been tainted by the Spaniard blood. You understand? But if all our people, we all look the same, it just, these uh, brothers on the internet say that they're not Israel, they're trying to say that the Hispanics, the lighter skinned ones, are not the, uh, the Israelites. They're both Israelites. Can I say something? Yes. Are you going after DNA now? If you have a, a Hispanic person and, um, they take a DNA test and they said that their um, Caucasian bloodline is like, let's say 64% and um, African bloodline is only 7%. Does that still make them the children of Israel if their bloodline is more European? Okay, let me just throw this out there in the air, sister. I'm glad that you okay. stopped. The sister's question is about the DNA test. Is the D basically, is the DNA test accurate to determine our nationality, our, our, our lineage? Correct? I, I don't believe so. I'm, I'm saying, like, that's your question. Yeah. So the sister's question is, is the DNA test accurate to determine our nationality, our lineage? No. Let's read the scripture. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called mm. so the oppositions of science is going against what because opposition it means it's going against something it's going against the scriptures it's going to take you away from what god has said the way that we determine sister where are you from by the way what's your name i'm sorry what's your name it's okay. Ruby. Ruby. Ruby? Yeah. Okay, Ruby. So the way that we determine our nationality according to the Bible, the Bible says um, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. The spirit, according to the Bible, is the word. So in God's word, it talks about us, our living conditions today, us being oppressed, us being cursed, and things like that. So now those prophecies have become our everyday living um conditions and our history so you can understand slave ships and things like that so this is how we know that we are god's people this is how we know that we are the people of the book because the curses fit us this is our history book so you can understand so now oppositions of science us trying to go to taking our blood taking our blood and comparing it with a white man that doesn't make any sense in order for us to have an accurate reading we would have to go take the blood samples of those people from that time to compare the two. You understand? 
So God says, no, avoid that. Avoid the oppositions of science. It's only going to take you further and further away from me. Read my word. Give me Isaiah 34, 16. This is how we come back to the Bible. So you're gonna listen. To get the DNA of, if you, you say you Jew, correct? Yeah. To get the DNA of Judah, you're gonna have to find the actual person right. that lived on the earth named Judah right. and take his remains and compare it to your remains. They don't have the remains of Judah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's BS. What he said is they're comparing us to white people in Israel. They're taking their samples and comparing it with us and trying to say, see, you guys are not Jews, you guys are from Zulu. And what's the other tribe? They, they did it on Don Cheeto. Uh, Zimbabwe. They say, you're from those places. That's all. Sierra Leone. Right, but then when they DNA test, when they did a DNA test with white people, they say, you're from King David, Solomon, you're from Esther, you're from the royal families of Israel. That's what they're trying to say. That's another mind trick that is working. Now DNA, like for example, if you don't know the father of your baby, right, and you think that's the guy, that's when DNA works because you actually have the, the specimens from this guy to you. So you can compare it. You cannot compare something, a, a brother that lived 3,000 years ago that his remains are no, no longer here. And those brothers that say Hispanics are not Israel, they'll say if you look at the Hispanic DNA, it connects back to China, which is wrong. Because if you look at ancient Native American culture, ancient Boricuan culture, or Arawak culture, it has nothing to do with China at all. There's no Buddha records in it. There's no Chinese uh, writing. Uh, there's no Mandarin. There's none of that. So it's a lie. The point is, they want the 12 tribes of Israel. Monique, if God says he chose Israel to be above all people, what does that mean? It's exactly what it means. That's plain. He said, the Israelites are above everybody. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For that all and holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God exists. You might need a Q-tip. You might need a Q-tip. This one's stuff in your ear. Listen. Read it again. Do you know what I mean? Hold on, hold on. It was clear. Go ahead, Ruby. You saying race. So what is it? A white person can't come here and say and be open and say, oh, I know this. We didn't even talk about white people. Because it's some of us. I'm just saying because you said. Why do you mention white people for? That's racist. No, I'm not being racist. Yes, you are. You mentioned white people. I'm not. I'm not being racist. <laughs> You're being racist. How? Because you said race. I didn't say race. Does God deal with race? What you mentioned. God just said it. He said the Israelites are above everybody, You're above all nations. Okay. Nations. okay. What's a nation? A nation of people. What people? Everybody else that wasn't Israel, God is above. Said Israel is above you. Let's read it again. Sometimes, sometimes we our English <laughs> comprehension skill ain't on the level, but let's do it. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. Listen, God can use anybody, but He does, but He favors the children of Israel above everybody else. That's right. For thy heart and holy people unto the Lord thy God. Give me Romans nine thirty. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto Himself. Hold on. Give me an easier one. Give me Malachi chapter one, mm. verse four. Mm. You got it. You got it. Ruby, listen good. I uh, good. <laughs> Look what Christ said. He said, "If any man have an ear, let him hear." That don't mean just have your ear open. That means understand this. Right. Listen good. <laughs> Malachi chapter one, verse one. Malachi chapter one and verse one. The last book before we get to the New Testament. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel. To who? To Israel. To who? To Israel. Thomas said, what's the topic and the subject? Israel. We learned that in school. You have the main idea, you got the plot, you got the characters, and you have the, the setting. The same thing with the Bible. Read. By Malachi, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Who did he love? Israel. Listen to Moni. Hold on. Give me verse three. <laughs> Listen good, Ruby. And I hated Esau. You got a flyer. Ruby, 
Listen to the flyer. God said he loved Israel and he hates Esau. Mm. Who's Esau today, Monique? Who? Who are the Edomites today? Like, oh, right. The so-called white people are the Edomites and Esau today. Let's read that again. I hated Esau. Wait a minute, what? I hated Esau. Wait, I thought God was all love. He said, I hate. That means God hates certain people on the earth. Yeah, I understand. Oh. That you love everybody. Yeah. And you're so loving and you're no, so no, kind. No, 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 no. Yes. Not me. Not me. See, God is loving. But we just no. read that God hates Esau. What does that mean? I would hate anything evil too. You know what I'm saying? But Can't not get me. to say Can't that get people, everybody's okay. like that. You know, so you you're saying, saying nowadays, let, let, So you're saying let's, that God is loving but he would hate evil but he hates you know? evil too? I'm saying, who the hold on a second, but sis, you said God is loving but he hates evil too. Right? Yeah. So wait, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. So now what evil be, sis, sis, hold on, hold on, hold on, sis, let me ask you a question. You would be upset about the evil, right? Yes. So now, what evil has the white man done to us that God his, should be mad about I'm happening saying, to his chosen people? But not, what but evil? Not all white man what evil? What evil, evil has? Was that low evil? Give, give me you Isaiah fourteen twenty one. What evil? What evil has has the white man done to us in slavery? Did we not have yokes of iron on our neck? Were we not raped? Were we not sold to other nations of people? Were our names not changed? Why do we call ourselves black? This happened, sister. This is I our history. So God says yeah. that there must be a judgment happening it to these will. nations. Read this. Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare slaughter for his children. So mm. now, the white man that says, oh, no, it wasn't me. It was my great, 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 great grandfather. The Bible says what? Read it again. Prepare slaughter for his children. Uh -huh. for, it, for the iniquity of their fathers. Mm. So the Bible says prepare slaughter, death, destruction, for his children. This may have happened, what, 1700s, 1600s, the 1400s, the 1800s, even up to the 2000s in other countries. God says prepare slaughter for their children, for the iniquity of their forefathers. And this also happened to the northern tribes also. They are our brothers. Judah and Ephraim were pressed together. The blacks and Hispanics were pressed together. We are the same people. We are the Israelites. This is our history, sister. Why are you rolling your eyes? It's just the I'm truth. Just, I'm saying, I'm not rolling my eyes. That's crazy. That, What's up? You know, Read that first John 40. Read first John 40. Okay, I have it. No, no, I'm it's just the scripture. But sister, just listen to the scripture, sister. Listen, listen to the scripture. I'm, 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 first John, John, John chapter 4, verse 8. First John chapter 4, verse 8. We're going over the history of what happened to the blacks and Hispanics, showing our people that this was Bible prophecy. This is how we know who we are according to God. We're not black, we're not African American. Listen to the Bible, read. First John chapter four verse eight. He that loveth not knoweth not God. God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. So the Bible says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. So if you don't have love, then you don't know God. But what is the love? Everybody says, yo, I love you. Yo, you're my best friend. I love you so much. How do we prove that we love somebody? Give me 1 John 5, verse 2, and we go down to 3. 1 John chapter 5, verse 2. 1 John chapter 5, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. So this is how we know that we love each other, Leon. When we love God and keep his commandments. So when we keep the commandments, meaning we apply them to each other, thou shalt not hate thy brother in our heart. What's your question, sister? What's your question? I just want to know something more about your nation. I know you've been around a while. Uh-huh. And, um, because I've been around a while. So I just wanted to know something more about your nation. Yes. And why you call yourself Israelites. I, I know for what interpretation I read, from man telling me your, what you're all about, but I want to hear from one of you so who, why, what you're about. Okay, so the sister's question is, why do we call ourselves the Israelites? Right. Because the Bible calls us the Israelites. We're going to get that to you, sister. This is how we know. Give me, um, as a matter of fact, give me Romans 8 verse 16 first. Give me Romans 8 verse 16. 
So this is this is how we know that we're the Israelites. The Bible says, read the scriptures. Hosea scripture. chapter 1, two. That's the one. After this, give me Hosea 1, verse 10. This is how we know that we're the Israelites. The Bible says to get understanding, you have to keep the commandments to get the truth, deeper understanding, and you also have to read it precept upon precept. You can't read it like a novel because you're gonna miss certain things. I understand. All right, so we're gonna read the scripture and we're gonna to go to another one. Romans chapter eight, verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now, according to the Bible, the spirit is the word of God. You understand? So in the word of God, like I was talking about, this is our history. This here is Bible prophecy according to the book of Deuteronomy and things like that. So those curses that were put on us is in the word of God. When we read those curses, that's our history. It resonates with us because we know growing up, we were taught that, wow, we went into slavery on slave ships, things like that. So this is how we know that we are the Israelites today. So now let's read Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. So in the place where it was said to the children of Israel, You are not my people. You aren't the chosen people of God. You guys are black. You guys are Hispanic. You guys are Native Americans. You guys are West Indians. These are bywords. That's another curse that was put on us. Your name is nigga. Your name is Toby, boy. You remember the movies. These things happen to us. So now, in the place where it was said unto the children of Israel, you're not the people of God, read. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. How shall it be said to the people of Israel that you are the Israelites? When you see brothers out here teaching the word of God, bringing the understanding to our people, making it plain. This is how you know, sister, you're an Israelite. What's your nationality? What do you call yourself? Do I call myself? Uh-huh. Call myself American. American. So, <laughs> American, that's, that's, not, that's, a, that's, that's not a nationality. That's not a nationality. You understand? Yeah. According to God, you are from the tribe of Judah. You are a princess right. from the tribe of Judah. Absolutely. That is royalty Absolutely. in the eyes of God. You understand? Sister, you're also from the tribe of Judah. This is what we don't know. So in the place where it was said to us, you are not God's chosen people, there, here in America, where our names were stripped, where we were beaten, where we were put into hard bondage and slavery, it shall be taught to the people that you are the children of God. The understanding is coming out. Read on. You, you are not my people. There shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. And a, a, Give me John 8.32. Okay, you know, let, me, let, me, let me read you one more scripture, sister, and then I have, I have a question for you. Give me John 8, verse 32. Because, were you taught this image? Um, I studied that, yeah. With, I'm, familiar, so, I'm familiar with that. So did you grow up in the Christian church? I grew up in the Christian church, but I started in the nation of Islam. So you, oh, so now you follow the nation of Islam. Actually. No, no, I said I started with the nation of Islam. Oh, oh okay. So and during the nation, the nation of Islam, Islam, we learned about Christianity. Ah, so do you, what are you following today? Right now, following Christianity. Christianity. Okay, so do you believe in this image? Or do you no, I don't. So what, do you, what color do you think Christ is? I don't look at Christ as a color. Mm, okay. See, this is what we have to talk. You understand? I'm glad that you said I, that. I know what they said in the book. I know what it says in his word, and that's what I'm going by. But I'm, I'm a spiritual person, so I'm just saying, I don't say God is, Jesus is black. You know, I just say Jesus is. God is. Okay, so you said a lot, sister. I want to I wanna make sure that I address everything. You said that you did, you're a spiritual person. You said that Christ isn't a color to, me. to you. And what was the other thing that you said? No, 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 no that you follow Christianity today. Yeah. Okay, so let's, we're gonna address those things according to the Bible. So I wanna read the scripture first. Let's read John chapter eight, verse 32. Listen up, listen to the Bible, read. John chapter eight, verse 32. Uh -huh. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right. What is the truth that we lack in our communities today? What do we need to be free from? The mental bondage, the mental slavery, the mental conditions that hold us down. 
low self-esteem. Our people, the blacks and Hispanics, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, must be taught the truth according to the Bible. Read Psalms 119. Psalms 119 verse 142 lets us know what the truth is according to the Bible. You understand? Let's read that. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So God's laws are the truth. This is what gives us understanding. This is what cleans up our minds. This is what cleans up our life. This is what cleans up our communities, rids us of the drug dealers, rids us of the gang members, of the brothers that are bugged out on drugs, of the brothers that have hatred in their heart towards one another, the stick up kids. This cleans up our communities. And it also teaches us the truth that Christianity is a lie. It's not in the Bible. Right. So now you also said that Jesus Christ is not is a spirit to you. Yeah. Okay. Let me get let me get first first uh let me get Luke twenty four. Let me get Luke twenty four and let me get uh seen the five hundred brethren at once. So now let me I have a question for you, sister. Can a spirit can you can you, can you hold the spirit? No. Okay. Let's read the scriptures to see what Christ said. This is this Bible is a heavy book, but listen up. This is your day. The truth shall make you free, sister. It will rid you of those of those religious chains that are in your mind. You understand? Let's read this. Thirty nine. Luke twenty four verse thirty nine. Behold, my hands and my feet. That is, that it is I myself. Hand on me and see. Sorry. Sorry, verse 38. Luke 24, verse 38. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why why do thoughts arise in your heart? So now this is after Christ passed away, but he resurrected. So now he reappears to the disciples. He reappears to his followers. And he says, Why are y'all so troubled to see me? Why do different thoughts of disbelief arise in your hearts? Read on. But they were terrified and afraid and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Yes. So now when he resurrected and reappeared before the people, they were terrified. They were afraid to see, oh, is that a spirit? Is that a ghost? You understand? Is that a ghost that we're seeing? Is that the son of man? Is that Christ? We're going. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet. So now if I was a spirit, look at my hands and look at my feet. We're going. It is I, myself, handle me. Handle me, grab hold of me. I'm not a spirit, touch me. Understand that I am the son of man. I came back to reappear to my people. You understand? So now, a spirit cannot be touched. When it, it, it goes straight through it, it's like a puff of air. You understand? So now, let's get Corinthians to, wait, hold on. Do you, are you sure you understand that? I don't want to just run past it. I understand that. I just want to get an elaboration. You know, you got, you went to the book and read it to me. I uh -huh. read it because I do Bible study. Okay. But you know, I'm just so careful you, about you, you, people who I listen to. Of you, course. Say, right. I'm just questioning because I be, I'm a Berean. I don't listen to anything anybody says. I make what, sure. What's a Berean? I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a country where people were, uh, in Berea, it's in, in, in one of the countries in, in the Bible. And the people that heard the word were called Bereans. Oh, because, the Jews of Berea. Yeah, because they went, not only did they hear the word of God, but they went back to verify it oh, themselves. They just, they just did not listen to what man had to say. That's the reason I'm asking you. Okay, that's good. That's the reason I'm asking you. Christ is a spirit, because he's in the spiritual realm. You yeah. understand? Yeah. However, However, we can't we can't see him with our eyes today. Right. But remember, the scripture says we all shall be changed in the what? Right. In the twinkling of an eye, we're going to have that same form. Yeah. You understand the point? I know that. Right. So we it was he was seen back then, of course, when he was walking the earth healing people. He was black. Then the Jews were black too. He was teaching people and healing. But today we're not going to be able to. You understand? I That's why. Because remember when you read the prop, the servant Elisha. Remember Elisha? Remember he had a servant. And he was afraid of the army. And he said, Which, if you can see what I see, you will not be afraid. Watch. Remember that, right? Yeah. Elisha was able to see the spirit realm. 
And then he prayed to the Lord. He said, let this young man see what I can see. And his eyes was open and he saw everything. Right. So, so what we understand, where we even standing right now, there's angels here. Right. You understand? Yes. That's, give me that scripture, the eyes of the Lord. Find that one. Listen to it. I'm going to show you this. Because the word angel only means messenger. Right. The word Malachi means angel, which is a messenger. You understand? Right. Read this. I think it's prop. You know what I want? Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. What does that mean? He's everywhere, but he has servants to do so. You understand? Yes. Meaning, who are those people that's in every place? The angels. They record everything. Mm. You understand? That's why that when the judgment, people don't teach this. There's a record of what you do on this earth when you prepare to the judgment seat. Mm. Every evil and every righteous thing you have done is going to be presented to the Father. Right. You understand? Mm. Most people don't understand that. Most people think God is all love and he's going to forgive everybody. That is not true. There's a certain punishment. That's why people get killed on the regular because vengeance is on the earth. God is pushing his vengeance on the earth. There's a record. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. The eyes are talking about his angels. Beholding the evil and the good. Beholding the evil, meaning he's recording what you're doing. So when you go to that judgment seat, he's going to play, he's going to play the tape on you. Remember when you did this? So you understand that, sister? What's your question? Not another question. Hold on, you listen to what you're listening to. Maybe just real quick. There's so many the things Christian, that I don't want to share on the floor. The Christian church system is not our, so not, it's not for our people at all. Right, right. Yes. You I'm, 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 learning, I'm learning that. That's why I have to ask what? questions. Right. We're the Israelites. You have a flyer? Huh? We're teaching, listen, the Israelites, we teach God's law. The, the church, they don't teach God's law. For example, the scriptures say woman is supposed to wear what? Pants. Pants. Because we had sisters here earlier. Talking about they praying for people in pants. You understand, sis? They're not know. keeping law. I know. The another law say we, we're not supposed to shave our beards mm -hmm. and bald our heads. Yes. The Christian church does not follow that. Right. If you look at a lot of these world-renowned ministers, no beard, shaved head. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, that's why I'm doing search right now because the Spirit of God told me to come out from that. All praises. You know, praises. to come out from that. So I'm... I'm, I'm some just told me to come over and ask. And you guys are, because I'm looking for where I belong. Okay. You know where you belong? You belong to the nation of Israel. That's your nationality. You understand? And as a people, we have been lied to for centuries. We have been taught that this is Jesus. Yeah. Like yesterday for me, yeah. Jehovah Witness lady gave me a flyer. Guess whose face was on the flyer? This guy. And I said, sister, how come white people always got to be in heaven how come we ought to, we got to be the one serving fruit? Serving fruit. Why do we, like, see the system with the watchtower? If you look at the images, who are they, who's, who's in the rulership authority? White people. Right. Where are we at? On the bottom. S serving the oranges. Serving, serving the fruit and the oranges. Yes. You understand? Yes. So we have, always in servitude. May I have some literature? I have yes. to leave. I have to leave. Guys, one question? Thank no, because we told you before. You hear, you hear the cause confusion. Uh, me? I'm a, I'm a peaceful man. I'm of God peaceful. Yep. I love everybody. The scripture said they, the scripture said they feed themselves just men. We're not, we're not stupid. Okay, make the question. Hold on. So, sister, you understand that? So, when our people, when they come here, they say they have questions. They don't have questions. They come here to, to argue and cause strife and make noises and dance. We don't got time for that. See, the foolishness. Let just no black. Every race kills. I don't care what color you are. What country you come from. You kill anyway. So what are you talking about? Black man's the best. Black man ain't over nobody. They do the same thing that you do to me. They'll kill me. They'll rape me. The significance of repentance. The Bible says that our brothers and sisters will be smitten with madness and confusion. This is what's happened to this brother. So now, this is why Christ taught repentance. Because our people are in a bugged out state of mind. So now, what is the significance of repentance to clean up our mind? So now, we're talking about repentance and why it's important to repent. So now, my question to you, sister, going back to that, to get away from the confusion. What are some things that 
Yeah, your circle of friends. What do you do on a daily basis? Do you think it's okay to go to the club while you're married? You have kids? Okay, domestic partnership. What's a domestic partnership? Fill me in. Well, it used to be something with same sex marriages, but then they made it for heterosexuals, I guess, that didn't want to go down the aisle, so they made it where they could be committed partners. So, are you married or is he a boyfriend? Just be polite. I don't know what you're going to say. If I slept with him, that would make him my husband. Of course. So, you know descriptions. So, now you've been following us for a while. You know about the pants. You know about shrimp, crab, and lobster. You know about the dietary law. But you know what the problem is with our people? The biggest problem with our people when they come to this Bible and they come to repentance is applying the moral law and the civil law. Laws of morality concerning yourself, cleaning yourself up first. Before you can go out and talk about this Bible, talk about repentance to others, you have to be right within yourself. Otherwise, that would be hypocrisy. You understand that when Christ was walking the earth, the leaders of that time were in hypocrisy. The Christian church is in hypocrisy. They say, oh, well, we have to, we have to follow God, we have to follow Christ. Yet, they're in the midst of adultery. They're sleeping with the, with the women in the church, you understand? Their, their daughters are in order. You understand? A lot of them are homosexuals. There are a lot of sins that are going on in the Christian church. So now, coming to repentance, give me Romans 12, verse 2. This is one of the things that repentance has to, why, why repentance is so important, you understand? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, be, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So now the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Don't follow after the sin of America. How do we know that America is in sin? When we read the Bible and we see the commandments. America says porn is okay. America says that women wearing booty shorts and uh, flat, revealing themselves to everybody. Homosexuality is okay. They pass all types of laws on it. You know what's crazy? I was at the I was at the children's museum with my daughter and my family a few weeks ago, and they have a transgender bathroom at the children's museum. So that's why the Bible says, "Be not conformed to the manners of this world." In other words, don't accept these things as normal. You want to because it's not normal. It's against God. This is the standard. Also, a domestic partnership is also against God. Domestic partnership is against God, sister. If you all, if, that's why I wanted to ask, are you married? Is it written down on paper that this is your husband? Or is it written down on paper that this is your domestic partner? You understand? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.